Great. Perfect. We'll have a joining. Great. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get us started um, for tonight. Thank you all for joining. Um, as I was saying before, as some folks were on, we we have the list of um, new and returning members from the borough president's office. Um, so everyone should have received an email um, with the appointment and reappointment information. Um, and with that, uh, we also work to try and get um, better contact info for folks. Um, so uh, as, as some folks mentioned, this may be the first time you heard from us in a while. Uh, um, I'm glad we were able to get through and sorry we weren't able to get through earlier. Um, yes, we'll we'll make sure that folks have a list. I keep inviting me. So that's something that I'm I'm dealing with. I'm not sure what this deal is. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll have a list and and we'll be working with particularly the committee chairs to make sure that there's contact info for for the committees so that the committees are able to work um, more effectively. So in fact, I have this. I'm gonna put this in the chat here. This is a, a modified Google form that we had we passed around at a meeting last time um, that I'll ask folks to fill out now and I'll also send it to make sure that we get folks who are not here. Um, so I put that in the chat. Basically what this is, is an updated contact form. Um, and so what we would, what we'd love is, is for folks to just note um, their preferred uh, email address. There's a space for, for a phone number if you're comfortable sharing that. Um, all of this will be internal only. This won't be an externally shared document, um, but it, it will be shared with, in particular, the committee chairs so that, that folks are able to, to email and call committee members. Um, also at the bottom of this form um, is, is um, a, a quick check for which committee you'd be interested in joining. Um, later tonight, we'll have uh, an overview of kind of what the committees are, what they're working on and whatnot. Um, so if you wanna wait to submit the form until then, feel free. Um, but we just ask that you um, fill that out at, at some point, um, either tonight or, or in the coming weeks um, with just your preferred email address, preferably one that's um, personal to you and one that you check regularly. Um, and we'll go through tonight for, for some of the new members, um, just some of some of the procedures and, and communication um, methods that we have um, on QSWAB. Um, this and, and all other meetings um, are, are recorded. Um, so this one in particular is going to be one that we'll recommend folks watch if they weren't able to be here tonight, um, just because we are going over so many um, policy um, reviews. So reviewing some of the changes we made to the bylaws last year, making sure everyone's on the same page about where all of the information lives um, between meetings and whatnot, uh, and just an update of, of what's going on, on with QSWAB. Um, so so, oh, and the form is is just online. There's no, um, nothing we need printed out. Um, you should be able to fill it and submit it just online. Um, for, for visitors today, um, if you're not a member of, of QSWAB, um, welcome. Um, we're so happy that you're here. Um, we have another form for, for you all um, that I will drop in the chat. This is just for, for visitors today. Um, you can share how you heard about SWAB if you're interested in getting um, more involved with us um, and some contact info. We've, um, though we haven't met um, in, in a month, we took the last month off. Uh, we've had a lot of events and, and at those events, we've, we've gotten some new uh, interest and in, in new folks. Um, so we were at a tabling event at the Queen's our president's office last week, we had an event this past weekend. And so we've got a lot of new folks coming into QSWAB, whether members or visitors. And so we wanna make sure that everyone is getting all the information they need. 
Um, so if you are a visitor and would like to, to stay in touch with us, please fill out this form. Um, we're also going to be piloting a, a new way of, of taking attendance and roll. Um, so rather than, you know, taking up the first couple of minutes going through roll, we have a, a behind the scenes check to just as people are entering, there's a, a way that we're checking whether people are um, present and, and calculating whether we have a quorum. Um, so the plan is, is that going forward, we'll just jump right in. We'll we'll welcome the new folks, put in the link for this form so that they can get their information. And, and for members, we're just tracking as people join in and checking folks out that way. Um, so with that, um, let me share my screen to get us started here. Excuse um, me, Brian. Yes. Okay, since we're not doing roll call and it's a different way, yeah. Um, when we have folks from community board that may have someone else um, attending, did we accommodate for that? That that's kind of all built in. Yeah. So so the okay. the language that went out, and this is for both community boards and organizations. Um, the the update in the appointment and, and reappointment letter basically says that for, for community boards and organizations, um, you have to designate a single uh, representative um, with their with their email. Um, and that's who we directly contact with. Of course, there's there's always the possibility for for folks um, who aren't able to make it to get someone to cover for them. Um, but the procedure is for them to email either me or the QSwab email address um, with that information. Um, so if if the designated representative isn't able to to attend, they would just email letting us know that someone is is taking their place. And so we would know ahead of time um, who is going to be representing the organization. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, thanks for the question. Um, let me see for the slide. Share screen. Okay, here we go. Great. So this should be loading. Taking longer than it's probably worth. Um but great. So um, as uh, I went over, these are the, the links to the forms that I put in. Um, this is what the, the back end looks like in terms of taking attendance. Um, and just to, just to cover some of the um, bylaw changes we made last year, and, and this one in relation to attendance, um, in order to be in good standing, we'll, we'll return to the committee part in a second, but just for, for everyone's information, um, in order to be in good standing, and, and what good standing essentially means is just eligibility to vote, um, a member has to attend um, four full board meetings within the prior six month period. So basically what we do is we look back at just the, the previous six months and see whether there were four um, meetings that you were able to attend. Um, and if so, you're in, in good standing, um, and if not, then, then you're not. Um, the way to rectify that, though, is to just attend meetings. So if, if you're not in good standing, um, you just have to attend meetings. And, and you know, the look back period is only six months. So eventually you'll you'll reach that four within within six months. The other thing is, is that you're always able to email ahead of time uh, to let us know if you're not able to uh, attend a meeting or if something came up, you can email afterwards as well. Um, and we can excuse those absences. Um, and so those won't count against you um, for, for missing meetings. Um, basically, this is just to make sure that that people are staying engaged and, and in communications with us. Obviously, we know things, things happen. This time isn't great for some people. Things come up. Um, so that's all totally fine. And, and also, it's, it's easy to get back into good standing. Um, we really want people to be able to to vote and participate, and and so that's kind of the compromise we made is is we're looking at the six months for for whether you've made it four times. 
Um, that is, is um, oh, right. So this past weekend, we had an event um, that the Environmental Justice uh, Committee um, put on. It was an informational session on, on disadvantaged communities. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that uh, this has been uploaded to our, our YouTube channel. So if you are able to attend and want to rewatch it, or if you weren't able to attend and, and want to see what, what was talked about, um, that recording is there. And in the description of the video, there's links to the slides. Um, we have two, we're waiting for the third, but as we get that, that'll be updated. But all that information is there. I think it was a really um, engaging conversation. Um, there were lots of great questions um, back and forth between panelists. Uh, this is an issue that, that the that the Queen Swab has commented on in the past um, and will continue to work on, uh, particularly in the Environmental Justice Committee. Um, so, so I think it's it's really interesting just to see what's what's going on and and kind of how our work is feeding in um, to things going on at the state level. Um, so definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, and big thanks to to the EJ Committee and, and the Law for for pulling this event off. Um, before we move on to, to more of our stuff, we have some folks from the New York Microplastics Coalition um, to talk to us. This is a, a coalition that we joined um, last year. Um, I, right now, I think it's it's mostly swabs, but it's, it's expanding. So um, I'm going to stop my share and see if our guests are here. Um, yeah, that would be me. Wonderful. Yeah, Joyce um, is the, my co-chair, but she's not able to join us tonight. Um, and I apologize. It seems like, okay, that looks better. It seems like really blurry and like you couldn't see me well. Um, hi, good evening. My name is Elena Cromeyer, and I am the uh, co-chair along with Joyce Bialik of M. Suave of the um, New York State um, Microplastics Coalition that we started through M. Swab and that uh, Queen Swab also decided to join um, a few months ago. So uh, I'm with uh, you all tonight to uh, talk about um, one of our activities that is coming out of our coalition, which you're a part of, um, and that is to conduct uh, mini waste audits. We did this, uh, the, the MSWAB did this back in May uh, with Riverkeeper, and we collected cigarette butts, um, other types of plastics, and then any other type of litter. And it was really eye-opening um, how much we collected in just an hour and a half. This was in uh, Washington Heights. And we would like to propose doing uh, something similar in uh, the other boroughs. And we are targeting um, legislators, assembly members in particular, who are on the health committee. And that's because one of the pieces of legislation that we're interested in um, advocating for is the Tobacco Product Waste Reduction Act, which would essentially ban um, filtered cigarettes and single use vapes. Uh, you know, filtered cigarettes are made of uh, cellulose acetate, which is a very slowly degrading plastic that never really goes away. It just breaks down into microplastics. So though we have identified two people, um, sorry, two different um, sets of legislators in Queens, and we want to propose uh, working with you all, if you would accept to um, uh, organize a cleanup in uh, Queens District um, 28, and that's with Senator Adabo, uh, Assembly Member Hevesi, and Council Member Adams. And the other district is 34, with uh, Senator Jessica Ramos, uh, Assembly Member Jessica Gonzalez Rojas, and Council Member Francisco Moya. We would hopefully like to do this this fall sometime, maybe late October, November, before it gets really cold. We were trying to do this earlier, um, but because hurricane season's just been, <laughs> you know, very long this year, um, we pushed it back. And we, of course, would provide the supplies, like the grabbers, the different bags to pick everything up. 
um, and we would be there, of course, um, to participate in the cleanups. And hopefully we can build relationships with these legislators to then uh, get them to partner with us on uh, legislation related to waste that we're interested in promoting. So uh, if that is something that, you know, the Queen Swab would like to do, we'd love to work with you to get um, a couple of cleanups set up this fall. If you have any questions, yeah. please. Feel free to ask me or drop them in the chat. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I think we've we've talked about um, organizing some cleanup, so so I think that this could be a, a good opportunity for that. But but I'll pause and and if, if folks have questions, um, you can uh, uh, come on out or I or um, uh, Ryan. I'm yeah. sorry, Chairman yeah. Ryan. Um, um, I have a question. What was it? It was District 28 and 30 what? Four? Was it 34? 35? 30, 34. 34. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm 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 familiar with uh both 28, 34, and I actually know the chairman of Community Board 3, Mr. Frank Taylor, is a good friend of mine. So oh, great. Oh, great. yes. Mm -hmm. We both went to the same uh, HBCU together, same college. Obviously, he went. Much younger, much, much long time before me, but we're good. We're good friends. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Helpful. Yes. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Benji. I'm actually from the community board, uh, Queens 02 Environmental Committee. I'm standing here for Laura Shepard, uh, the chair of that committee. Um, I think we might be interested in hearing what you have to say at the co community board meeting, the environmental community committee meeting that is number one. I was actually just writing you a, a little message here, but it's gonna be quicker to just speak. The other thing is I'm also a volunteer. I organize uh, two composting sites, Woodside Sunnyside Composting and Rusty Wheelbarrow Farm. So we might be interested in working with you uh, on these sites when you're uh, preparing to organize actual cleanup. We have volunteers uh, sometime coming from the uh, master composter program that may be interested in, you know, after an hour of work at the, our composting site, maybe helping out with cleanup and things like this. So maybe uh, we can get in touch about that. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, thank you. Um, Benjamin, did you say you uh, head up the composting committee or group within um, Queen Swap? Uh, no, 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 not the Queen Swap, the community board, uh, community board, uh, and I'm I'm not heading, but I'm standing up for the chair of the environmental committee uh, at uh, at the community board. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that would be really interesting collaboration. I think that would be great. Yeah, you can. Hi, Elena. Is it okay if I ask a question? It's Gloria. Yes, of course. Um, hi, how are you? Thank you for your presentation. I really appreciate it. And um, it's interesting to hear about. And I was wondering, um, I, I'm with the Eastern Queens Alliance. And I was wondering um, if you could talk a little bit more about what those cleanups uh, look like. I mean, just a little bit about how they're organized, what really is happening um, during the cleanups. Obviously, you're cleaning up, but if you could tell us a, just a little bit more about the format of the um, of, of, of the event. Yeah, of course. I'd love to. Okay. Love to Thank you. Um, so how we did it in May, and of course, it could look a little different than this, um, depending on people's availability and their schedules. We gathered um, in Washington Heights and I think it was a Saturday morning and we had bags uh, labeled to collect the three items that uh, waste items that we were interested in at the time, which are cigarette butts, um, other plastics, and then everything else. This time we want to do cigarette butts, uh, plastic bottles, and then um, cans. Uh, other types of plastics, and then everything else. So have four different categories instead of three. 
and we go around um, a small radius. It's not a big area um, for an hour and a half. And we collect these items with grabbers that we have. We provide um, gloves, masks, grabbers, the bags, and uh, we pick up the items and then we we sort them. At the end, we gather them all together and we weigh them. So um, what we found, just to give you an idea, in just an hour and a half, was um, 21 pounds of plastic waste and then 18.8 pounds of everything else waste. And a lot of that waste was uh, cigarette butts. And we want to also add vapes. That's the one thing I forgot to add um, because vapes are, have become so popular and uh, they're partially made of plastic too and a lot of other nasty toxic chemicals that are not degradable. So um, yeah, that's essentially what we do. And then we put together like a little infographic with the findings of how much waste we gather. And we share that with the legislators from that district so that they're aware of, you know, the level of waste in their specific districts. So that's sort of what it looks like. I'm not sure if yeah, you have any other questions. Great. No, so, so you pick an area within a community board or a, within a district. And once you've picked that area, that's, so you might do several of them then in the next during the fall before it gets yes. cold you probably be doing a couple of districts okay we hope to yeah and the logic mm -hmm. um behind how we chose the mm -hmm. districts is that the assembly members uh, assembly districts. Are focusing okay. on, yeah they're on the assembly health committee so mm -hmm. there are a couple of pieces of legislation that we're interested in pushing like the tobacco product waste reduction act that i mentioned which has no assembly sponsor currently. It has a Senate sponsor, but not an assembly sponsor. So that's sort of the logic behind focusing on health committee members. And then uh, the senators and council members are in that same district of the health committee assembly members. So for Queens, we have two, like I mentioned, District 28 and 34, and I can put in the uh, 34 info in the chat. So it, because we don't have a health committee member in our assembly district, which is 31, would that mean that that wouldn't be a district that you would want to focus in on? Or maybe there would be, I mean, I'm not committing to anything. I'm just asking because maybe there'd be a way that you could tell us how you do the work you do and we could follow, you know, we could oh. use that as a model. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I can take that back to... Yeah. My co-chair, uh, Joyce, mm -hmm. and see how we might go about that if we want to have additional cleanups or mm -hmm. if we um, like join them. Um, you said you're from District 31? Assembly District. I am from 31. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm just um, just trying to understand, you know, how, how you're Thank working you. this, but Thank it you. sounds great. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. I think Catherine has her hand up. Hi, how are you? Thanks for the work that you're doing. Hi, good. How are you uh, doing? Hi. Um, I just wanted to, I mean, this is very late uh, for us to organize together, but the organization that I work with outside of QSWAB called Coastal Preservation Network, we're doing a cleanup. It happens to be on Sunday as part of a larger event and we're in College Point. And um, one of the specific areas that we're targeting is this fishing area in our park where, you know, it's a public park. So smoking is not permitted. Therefore, we can't have receptacles for cigarettes, the Parks Department tells us, even though we'd love to buy them. But um, the fishermen are just like, in this particular area anyway, just like very... Uh, <laughs> prolific smokers you know they mm. smoke and smoke and smoke and throw it all over the fence so the coastline is just yeah. gross with so many cigarette butts along with fishing wire and you know assorted other trash so yeah. one of our missions this weekend is to pick up the cigarette butts and I'd be happy to report you know whatever um data back to you but I'm really curious about 
how you're amassing your cigarette butts. Like, are you literally like, sorry, my bird. Are you literally just um, collecting the butts and like laying them out on a tarp or something like it's so small, you know, obviously it's so yeah. small. So usually we just bag everything up and put it in the big green trash bags, but I'm curious about your approach and whether you'd be interested in the data from this area. Yeah, definitely would be interested, especially that um, it's a coastal area because um, a lot of those cigarette butts just eventually make their way into the waterways and are horrible for aquatic ecosystems like everyone here knows. Um, so I'd love to, yeah, if you could share the data with us, that'd be really interesting. Um, and yes, yeah, so we, uh, at the end of the cleanup, we empty out bags, like you said, like on a tarp type material. And we use gloves, of course, because these, especially the butts, they're toxic. So you shouldn't handle them just with your bare hands. Um, and we just separate them into like different, I would say like uh, mounds of trash and, um, and put them back in the bags to weigh them. So that's how we've done it. Yeah. And then Joyce actually took it, the waste away, most of it. And I don't really know how she disposed of it, but I can ask her because there's no real way to dispose of safely uh, things like cigarette butts. I mean, the, even yeah. if we throw them away in trash cans, they still end up in landfills and leach into the soil. So, you know. Right. But so you're literally like, combining it with all the other trash that you pick up from an area or you're specifically focusing on only picking up butts no we so we pick up we when we did it in may we did butts other plastics and then everything else so we're not leaving any waste behind and then wow. this time we're adding um plastic bottles and also cans to that list okay yeah so we can report out on each of those items, how much we found and their weight. And you have a scale that you utilize. Yes. Yeah. Um, Joyce, I think, brought the scale last time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, great. I mean, I'm, I don't actually have a scale, so... Um... Well, we would bring... Um, oh, so are you going to... Uh, weigh anything when you do your cleanup how are you going to track it we don't usually we just like pile up the bags and take pictures and report on it that way it's not not very data rich what we do it's just like intensive cleanups typically mm -hmm. so but I love that you do that and that that's important to have like a quantifiable um you know findings it's yeah. Yeah, I'm actually going to share the um, little flyer that someone from the M swab put together with our results. I'll put it in the chat so you can see how we did it. Um, yeah, I think it's compelling to see numbers behind um, waste, right? And approaching yeah. legislators about it. Yeah. Let me see. Well, maybe we can get a scale like you have. I don't want to take up too much time, but um, that you know, it's, it's smart. yeah. I think you can find them pretty inexpensively, and then you know, in the cleanups we would do or hopefully do with you all in Queens, we would be able to bring the scale and our other materials. Okay. Well, thank so you. Just dropped it in the chat, and let me know if you can't open it, and I can try to email it to Ryan. I was able to open it. Thank you. Great. Um, are there other questions? So it sounds like um, there's there's interest in it for the EJ committee to to start. Um, yes, great, great point, Mary, with the the inter swab action, and and I think that this is this is how we can show up is is organized. Or, or helping to organize these events in Queens as part of a larger citywide project. Um, so I think that's great. That's that's really exciting. Um, I think maybe the what would make the most sense um, immediately would be to have the the EJ committee start with this. And and if we want to 
bring on um, folks if we want to do like a, a task force on on cleanups. I know we have some others that we've been we've been looking at. So yeah, so so Bilal put his his email in there if you want to follow up with with him um, with that to get started. And and I think that um, yeah, we yeah. can we can can start organizing that and and folks who are interested also um can reach out to Bilal if you're if you're not already involved with the EJ committee um yeah yeah Mary another great point tying the the cleanups to legislators and and I think for for us too um as a swab one of one of the reasons we wanted to do that is it's you know it's a fun outdoor thing for for folks who are are able to to get together outside of of these formal meetings just to to get to know other swab folks get, get interested in solid waste management who show up um telling them about what swab's doing hopefully get new folks involved in swabs so i think that there's a ton of of benefits um in addition to just cleaning up uh waste so um, definitely something that that we'd be interested in um, and and look forward to partnering with, with you all on. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it is, it also helps to, I mean, you know, raise awareness about, you know, some people just don't realize how much waste there is in their community. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I I represent NYC H two O on on the swab, and and we do a lot of cleanups too. And and what my boss always says is it's it's one way for for people to take an action locally within solid waste as like a first step. So maybe you don't know about the issue, maybe you know about solid waste, but don't think there's anything you can do. Um, you know, providing these opportunities for people, it's like a really great way for people to start getting involved locally. Um, I think these are just really great opportunities. Great. Um, uh, is there anything else or, or should we move on to next agenda item? Well, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great evening and rest of your meeting. And I'll be in touch with people. I, I got your contact info. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you so Take much. Care. Bye. Bye. Awesome. So this is a nice transition into committees. Um, I'm going to share my screen again for the second part. Uh, let's see what this Okay. Awesome. So what we have here is is the second part of our um, bylaws talking about good standing. Um, and the the first half is is attendance at these monthly meetings. And the second part is just active participation in in, in a committee. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the Environmental Justice Committee. Uh, in a second, we'll have uh, some of the other chairs talk about what their committees are, what they're working on, next meetings, whatnot. Um, the idea behind this is, you know, a lot of our work, the actual um, details of the work take place in committee. Um, you know, there's only so much we can do in a Zoom room with, with the whole swab. So committees are, are where, you know, the details are hashed out and drafts are written and whatnot. So, so in order to be in good standing, um, members do have to be involved in at least one committee um, and attend about half of the, the committee um, meetings within a prior six month period. And again, you know, there's flexibility working with the um, committee chairs, you know, finding a time that, that folks can meet, working outside the committees. There's, there's lots of flexibility here. The idea is just to be actively involved in at least one committee. And so with that, um, we'll go through the, the committees that we currently have active. Um, if the chairs want to just talk about um, if you have met recently, last month we, we were off. Um, some of the committees did meet, some didn't. Um, so if you did meet last month and have things that you want to report back to the swab, um, feel free to do that now. And if not, that's totally fine. Um, you can just give an overview of kind of what the committee is, is 
has been focused on, what uh, will be focused on coming up, and just kind of what people can expect um, if this is the committee that they would like to get involved with. So the first um, committee that I have up is the Legislative Committee, which is chaired by Mary Arnold. Um, and the next meeting that I have, and please correct me if this is wrong, is October 26th at 7 p.m. Um, all of these are, are on Zoom. Um, as we move into to hybrid meetings, we can um, work with each of the committees to see what makes the most sense for them. But um, at the moment, all of these are on Zoom. Um, and so you're able to join that way. So I will will stop the share here and, and pass it off. Mary, if you just wanna talk about some of the work you've done, what folks can expect at this next meeting, generally, that sort of thing. Okay, actually we start at 6.30. Uh, we try to keep meetings to an hour. Uh, Ryan, could you share the link to the minutes of the last meeting? that I shared with you uh, just tonight. There's a there's yes. a link. So people could just, rather than just talk endlessly, they could see um, you know, what we did at the last meeting. And um, certainly um, everyone is invited to, uh, to participate. Um, we're gonna be developing a uh, tracking tool over the, the months ahead. Um, the meetings are held jointly with the Brooklyn Swap. Uh, Enrique is the new chair uh, for Brooklyn Swap because Rhonda became the chair. And um, uh, we're going to have a draft uh, tool populated with legislation. And um, we're going to be inviting people to take ownership of uh, you know, tracking the legislation and then uh, working it through the the swab if it if it you know if it's a priority. Did you did you find that Ryan? Computer is going very slowly. Oh okay. It is pulling up. Um. We can we can move on, and I'll post this in there. I think this is a a, a really just um, in the we could put it in the in the chat. Yeah, and then people could pull it up. Mary, yeah. did did you say the meeting is at six thirty or six? Six thirty. Okay. All right. Thank so, you. We started at six last time, but. I mean, generally we we start at six thirty. Okay. Uh, last last time was a little, um, you know, there was, I don't know, someone had an issue with the problem or w with the time. Yes, and we um we have a calendar which I'll I'll show a little bit later on our our website, um which has all of these committee meetings. Um, I'll make sure that that time is updated to the, the right time, um, but it has the, the time, the Zoom link, everything there um, is where you can find all the info about these, these committee meetings. Um, we, we do our best to send out, um, thank you, Mary. Um, we do our best to to send out reminders and and compile the dates and Zoom links and everything. But if you're ever wondering when the next committee meeting um, of a certain committee is, or just in general about our our events, we have a calendar that we are actively updating, um, which I'll show you. Yeah. Mary, do you want to speak a bit just to some of the uh, your, the committee's successes? Um, over the last year, you know, skip the stuff and very actively involved with mandatory composting, our pilot project and all yeah. of that. Yeah, we've been working, uh, as I say, with the Brooklyn swab, but then taking all swab action, um, you know, there it's we, we've been taking positions. So these are like short position papers or letters that go to uh, elected officials, uh, to the mayor, 
uh, to Speaker Adams uh, uh, and uh, legislators, um, you know, about uh, zero waste legislation in the city. Uh, the borough president was instrumental in working with the speaker to get the skip the stuff uh, legislation to a vote that was to uh, make it, you have to ask for condiments and silverware for takeout um, meals instead of uh, just having it automatically given to you. Um, and um, we took positions on EPR and on um, uh, that packaging in the bottle bill. Uh, we've taken a position on um, composting, um, you know, being preferable in the hierarchy of things to uh, anaerobic co-digestion. And so we we built up an all swab, uh, you know, position. So what we're hoping is now we're tracking legislation. So when legislation uh, does come up, we have a body of positions that we've taken, which are all very, you know, they'd be very familiar to all of you, uh, you know, in terms of uh, what we what we would like to see happening, less waste, more composting, um, you know, less methane, less sewer sludge, you know, more beneficial soil amendments. You know, it's nothing, you know, crazy. It's, but it takes a while to, for the, all the swabs to agree, to discuss it, to vote on it, and then to have a position. So um, encourage anyone who has a passion for, you know, particular issues to join the legislative committee and, you know, just you can see what they're doing now, even with this cleanup, you know, where then you target a legislator. So, you know, it's like a, different actions and working with other swabs, you know, it's been very effective. So please participate. You're, su you're supposed to anyway, you have to join one committee. And I hope, you know, the legislative committee will be one that you consider seriously. So please click on the link and you can see what we talked about at the last meeting and please come to the next meeting. Thank you. Yeah, and and I think um, you know there are lots of of roles that that um, the legislative committee could could use support on. Um, you know, some of it is drafting these letters. So you know that's that's a big part of it is is drafting. But there's also you know folks reading these at at um, hearings. Um, we like to mix up who's who's reading, so it's not always the same people or the same swab um, reading it. So you know, showing up to committee hearings and reading the prepared um, statement, reaching out to legislators. So there's lots of lots of things that can be done on on the legislative committee. Um, if you know, if if it seems daunting, the the title legislative there there are lots of you know relational roles. Um, speaking, writing, lots of things that can be done. Right. Um, yeah. Ulrike, Ulrike um, is not that familiar with, you know, all the things that have, have gone on or are going on in the state, but she has, you know, an expertise in, um, you know, uh, projects, managing projects, and she has an interest in doing this legislative tool. And, you know, you learn. And, you know, every year different things come up. So we're all learning all the time. So, you know, don't be, don't think that you don't know enough. Uh, none of us knows enough. Yes, definitely. Great. So um, let's share this again really quickly. So we have the date. Um, oops. I want to do that. So next, I'll I'll turn it over um, to Bilal to talk about the Environmental Justice Committee um, and the next meeting that I have um, for for the EJ Committee is October sixth at seven thirty, um, also on Zoom.
So I'll stop here. And Bilal, if you want to talk a bit about, you can talk about the event too. Um, I didn't mean to steal your thunder at the beginning of the meeting <laughs> to share the link. So, yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bilal Key. For those who are new, welcome to QSWAB for the visitors here and hope uh, that the visitors um, decide to join the, this uh, organization and, and participate. Um, <clears throat> the Remember the Justice Committee has been working very diligently over the summer. We organized uh, the informational session on the disadvantaged communities uh, that took place last Saturday. Uh, we had a panel of, of, of presenters that uh, delivered very informative um, presentations. Um, we have Ms. Alana Kettle-Tucky, who is the uh, director of the Environmental Justice Committee for the Department of Environmental Environmental Conservation in the state of New York. Uh, we had uh, uh, Dr. Vina, Natalie Vina of Queens College, and also Ms. Barbara Brown of the Eastern Queens Alliance, all addressed the topic of disadvantaged communities. Um, what does it mean to, what does the DAC, what does it mean to be disadvantaged? We define the definition. Um, we take a look at the mapping, the current state of Queens as it stands now. Um, how the community can get involved. And we went through all the technicalities. Um, obviously, there's a lot more work to be done with this issue. As of right now, uh, the map is approved for its draft mode, but it's not finalized completely. Uh, but there are a lot of questions as to um, implementation of having a representative on the Climate Justice Working Group, which Queens does not at this point. There's only three uh representatives uh from the new york city area to actually sit on the nine point nine person board uh, so that's the issue of concern that we want to keep pushing forward on and just making sure that queens is accurate the mapping is accurate for the whole borough right now it's not um an accurate account of all queens communities um so it went really well um, but this is a issue that will follow us through this fiscal year uh, with the new uh, membership and the continuation of the disadvantaged communities um, conversation and further planning. Um, we do have a meeting uh, scheduled for next Friday for those who could make it. It will be via Zoom at 7.30 where we will outline more of what we want to work on, and which is one of the disadvantaged communities. Um, we heard about opportunity for collaboration for cleanups um, in Districts 28 and 34. Um, which we're very excited to uh, hear about and definitely excited to um, organize those cleanups in those communities and um, going forth and addressing some of the other things that have been stated in the um, state of waste report, which is um, the quality of life issues with 311, um, which we will be revisiting um, this year um, as well. So we look forward to you all's participation in the Environmental Justice Committee. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Um, again, a, a really active committee for, for folks to get involved in. There's there's a ton of different roles that that the committee could use, everything from, from planning events. Um, we've had a lot of events coming out of, of EJ, including these these cleanups. Um, but there's there's also a lot of work with, with the 311 stuff. Um, which we'd love to to get folks in on. Um, so if you know about three on one data using it, mapping it, or want to learn more, this this would be a great committee to join. Um, but yes, um, the next um committee, oops, ahead. Um, the next committee, which I'll I'll share um my screen again, is the the education and communications committee. Um, where did that share screen? Um, and this is co-chaired um, by Jenny Lynn and Janet Beria. And uh, basically this, one of the big things that we want to do on SWAB, which, which this committee is, is going to be helping with, is reaching out to all of the community boards to give basically a, a presentation on what the swab is, how we can support the, the community board. Um, as Bilal mentioned, we have a um, state of wasting Queens report 
um, which basically broke down a lot of solid waste um, statistics to the community district level. So whether that's tonnage of, of um, material picked up, the uh, cycling diversion rate, um, as we're rolling out curbside organics, um, the amount of organic material picked up. So we have a lot of information and, and basically have these community district profiles of, of what solid waste looks like. Um, so whether that's supporting an area um, that's still struggling to get participation in uh, curbside or just to give a breakdown of what the solid waste issues look like in the community board, um, we have all that information. We want to get that information out, and we really want to get um, community boards involved um, with us and and us with them. Um, particularly as we're doing some of these cleanups, you know, having um, you know direct contact with with community boards either through the community board reps that are on QSwab um, or others who are are interested in in these kinds of issues. Um, that's something we're we're really trying to to push. So, um, you know, if you would be interested in in compiling those kind of tailored presentations for each of the community boards, um, giving those presentations, um, environmental education kind of stuff, if that's something you're really interested in, this would be a great committee. Um, this committee also works on, you know, kind of the, the bread and butter education and communication things that QSWAB has to work with. So we have have a, a number of uh, social media profiles where we put out information and um, report back on events, let people know what's going on. Uh, as policies change, you know, the rollout of curbside composting in Queens was something where, you know, we want to be pushing out messaging about the program and how we get involved. Um, all of that communication and education um, is is done through this committee. Um, so there's always work for for folks to help out on um, since really it's it's just limited to what we have capacity to. You know, some of the larger and, and longer running swabs, Manhattan in particular, have a, a, a website full of resources, um, fact sheets and and whatnot that, you know, with with enough capacity on this committee, if that's something people are interested in developing, um, there's really uh, no limit to to what this committee could do. Um, I'm still following up to see when the next uh, committee meeting will be, um, but this is this is a committee that that uh, really there's a ton of a ton of things that that you could um, work on. So next um, we have this progressive. Oops. Next we have not too fast. Um, a joint swab committee. So this is the organics committee. Um, so as Mary mentioned, uh, the legislative committee meets jointly with uh, the Brooklyn swab. Um, the organics committee um, meets jointly with the, the Manhattan organics um, committee. And so we, we have a designated um, rep, but it's open to, to anyone who wants to, to join this committee. Um, and it does count as as QSWAB um, committee for, for good standing. Um, but basically, this looks at uh, the organics program through um, ESMY. And so Queens, we currently were the first borough to get curbside. Um, and now it's rolling out to the other boroughs. And so we have this dual role of, of you know, educating folks within Queens about the program during the implementation, but then also working with the other swabs as the, the services rolled out to their boroughs, um, both things that are, are working in Queens, things that aren't working in Queens, um, as they're, they're kind of replicating the rollout in Queens, you know, we have a, a, a role to play there as well. Um, the next meeting that I have for, for that committee is October 9th at 5.30. Um, but we have um, with us tonight, Allison from MSWAB. So I'm gonna stop my share yeah. here and Great. pass it off for some updates. Uh, yeah, actually our meetings usually take place. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to start my camera. There I am. Um, our meetings usually take place the second Monday of the month, but because it's Columbus Day in October, 
It will be, um, let me look quickly, the 16th at 5.30. But typically it is the second Monday of the month at 5.30. Uh, there's a lot going on. I mean, Ryan talked about a lot of it. Obviously, mandatory composting and the rollout has been um, a big focus of ours. We... Um, and Gil, I wish Gil was here. He was uh, he it was instrumental in creating the Compost Carnival, which is taking place this Sunday. And it's in Brooklyn. It's kind of it's in Prospect Park. And I realize, you know, not your backyard. Um, but it's, you know, it's great timing because it coincides with celebrating the 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 launch of curbside collection in Brooklyn. So I'm planning to kind of have a, a probably an all swab kind of table. I'm putting together in from you know materials and things like that. If anybody here has any, I don't know if anybody wants to go. Um, I should. I don't even have a link to the flyer. Oh God, I need to find that link and send it to you guys. Um, in case anybody does want to go, it's by Prospect Park. I but the the flyer will have all the information. Um. It, it should be a lot of fun. I guess some of you may have been to them. Gil has held them in the past. I think 2021, 2019, I'm, I forget when, but this should be a lot of fun. We've had a lot more support, which is great. You know, we have a lot of volunteers, but we're, we need more volunteers. So if anybody does want to uh, volunteer, um, there is a sign up and maybe, maybe you just put that in the chat. So, um, so another thing uh, we're wor this is uh, we're also working this this year finally I think we're getting some traction with pumpkins because it's always been my thought that you know pump ideally it'd be great to have a pumpkin collection like they do for Christmas trees and from what I understand from the last meeting with the commissioner you talked about um, like pumpkin smashes and things like that and I I don't think she really even knew much about them or that they existed so I think. We opened her eyes a little bit, and I think, you know, maybe she'll help uh, expand the number of them. I, I put together a pumpkin plan, and I can put a link to that. And I can put a link to a couple of things in the chat, but just know I, I wouldn't, I would ask that you don't share it beyond this group right now because I'm still finalizing it for the compost carnival on Sunday. So it's a little bit of a work in progress still. Um, but we have a new volunteer actually who's very connected to the the schools and i think he he was like a former sustainability coordinator so we're talking about getting more he's looking at maybe getting like six schools that he knows to do like pumpkin smashes or pumpkin type events all right i'm going let me just put put in the chat okay this is the plan um I can't do it. Okay, I'll find it. Um, yeah, as I said, though, it's it's a draft now, you know, <clears throat> just to give you an eye, a sense and maybe give you guys ideas because maybe you have thoughts. Maybe you know other people doing. I, I listed a bunch of you know, pumpkin activities that I was aware of from last year. Now people are going to start talking about them for this year. Um, you know, so if anybody's interested in, in getting more involved with pumpkins, it's obviously... Uh, I also kind of created a pumpkin pledge because you guys are in a great position. I mean, pumpkins, you know, this pumpkin pledge basically says pumpkins are not trash. And since you guys have uh, curbside, everybody has curbside. So every pumpkin should be in a brown bin. There should be no pumpkins in the garbage in Queens. So <laughs> I will I'll put the pumpkin pledge again. That's another um, flyer I'm working on, you know, finalizing for the uh, carnival on Sunday. Um, you know, we, we, all, we also kind of have a spinoff, an organics task force that spun off, which is also very focused on, on, on community composting and, um, you know, kind of protecting community composting start kind of started by the fact that budgets are being cut uh, over the next couple of years. Um, so we really, and and compost, you know, the community composters are really making compost. So there's a whole uh, education program that we're working on related to that. So that's that's kind of a separate organics task force. If anybody's interested in that, really just focusing on community gardens. We're kind of looking at trying to figure out who has capacity 
we're looking at a lot of different things. So that doesn't have a regular schedule. At, and after the carnival, maybe we will have one. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, we're doing a lot of things. I mean, we're, we're concerned. Obviously, we're all concerned thinking that, you know, the mayor's cutting budgets. Let's hope that doesn't impact composting. Um, someone from the mayor's office of um, climate, I think, is going to be at the compost carnival on Sunday. If anybody wants to go meet them, that would be a good opportunity there. So, uh, yeah, I will. Let me put the, I'll put the pumpkin pledge in the chat also. Again, it's a draft, but I would love to uh, hear from you if you're if you think you might want to, you know, run with doing something more about pumpkins. You know, even just pushing it out in the media, it's a story like the pumpkin pledge which I will share, um, you know, we're going to have to, I haven't figured it out yet, but <laughs> I want to get it out, you know, into the media somehow. Maybe it's just social media. I don't know. So I think, that, I think that's about it. Oh, you know, there's legislation also. Gail Brewer has sponsored um, legislation that we're working with her on to uh, require that the largest 10 parks compost. So in the parks. So we, and there are only 15 sponsors for that. And I'm going to, I'll put a lit, I can put links to that also in the chat. And I have a list, I have a link to the, the legislation plus a link to the list of current sponsors. There's only 15 right now. So when I put the link in the chat, look and see if your council member has sponsored it. And if not, maybe reach out. So I think that's enough, but I look forward to maybe seeing some of you on Sunday. Great, thank you so much. I'll share. I have this is the this is the flyer here. Um, I put the the link in the in the chat. Sorry. Right. Yes, right. thank, you. Oh, thank you. Okay. So much, and I, I I'll mention just one thing. And Ryan, I don't know if it was on your your agenda, but the fundraiser next week, which yeah. is, are you going to talk about it? You should because I don't know much. I'll um. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's uh of course i don't have the flyer for that at the top of my uh tip of my fingers uh october 5th it's downtown in manhattan at the old slip so it's way downtown i don't know if that's the seaport area um but please you know pencil it in um the theme of that is envisioning organics in new york city health and urban soils healthy people healthy communities and the benefits of compost and composting so it's yeah perfect there's the thing um there'll be a panel i can't remember the names of the people um but if you know if you're interested in more information please let me know and um, I don't know. I'll get. I'll find the link to to uh, for tickets and try to put that in the chat. Unless you have that too, Ryan. I, I think that's the right link. But I is that to buy tickets? Is that you click on that? Okay. I believe so. All right. I'll try. I got to put a bunch of stuff in the chat. So let me try to work on that. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Yeah. So, so lots, um, lots going on here. Um, and I'd say also like we have a, a ton of opportunities to do tabling, like, like at this, um, upcoming event this, this weekend. So, um, we also got like a 500 <laughs> flyers on skip the stuff from DSNY. Um, so if folks are interested in tabling, um at this event or any or just in general in future let me know we can kind of do like a uh an email list maybe and i can just email requests as they come in and if folks are interested in that i have um you know often tables are provided but like i have a little table and chairs and sign-in sheets and some material to put up so that's another thing that if you're interested in if like that's something that you want to do for qswab there are usually tons of opportunities to do that um so so that's great there's there's lots of events to get involved in i i think there there's in the chat some interest in the pumpkin pledge um and just in general the the pumpkin plan is something that i'd be really interested in as well um i think that's something that you know communication education can can work on in terms of once things are finalized sending out over social media uh but also email 
um, our, our Google group, but also getting out into the, the community um, more promoting that. I think that that's, that's great. And, and I also think that that's, um, you know, there are a lot of ways that you can run with that. That's really fun um, because it's, it's tied to fall and, and a holiday and, you know, pumpkin smashes in, in general are, are fun. Um, have this little from one of them, you know, it's, they're, they're fun events. And I think that's, this is another way that we can reach people um, in general about composting. I mean, I, I think we, we want to make sure that the pumpkins are composted um, for their own sake, uh, but it's also the added benefit of talking to people about composting and organics. And as this is rolling out, um, you know, we have curbside, Brooklyn is getting it next week, so they'll have it for, for Halloween. Um, you know, reaching folks and, and letting them know that like this is exactly the kind of material that they can be putting in their brown bins and, and should be putting in their brown bins, I, I think is, is really great. I think that there's a lot of things we can do with this. Um, Just one thing I, I, get, well, I meant to mention too, it, it's a way to maybe get people who have never composted before to think about it. Because, you know, some people are like, I'm not going to deal with my food scraps, you know, the gross garbage. There's no ick factor with a pumpkin. It'll sit on your table for months before it even starts rotting so it's it's easy it's clean neat unless it's already carved then it's a little different but yeah, yeah. just trying to get new people recruit new composters exactly great so um moving on from from that those are those are our current active um committees there there are a few uh, additional committees that that we've worked with the other swabs on um, with varying degrees of, of participation on our end. Um, and if there are other committees or other things that you're interested in, the, the other swabs have committees that we could we can help out with. Um, we're also able to to form new committees if if it makes sense. Um, I think right now we're we're just trying to to institutionally build up um, a few at the moment, but you know, if, if there's something that you're really interested in that's not covered by a committee, um, let me know and we can figure out how um, how that work can be incorporated into, into QSwap. Um, I wanted to, to just go through, um, as we, we end our, our meeting tonight, just going through some uh, additional um, just policies and and logistical details to make sure everyone knows where um, information about QSwab lives. Um, so this is this is our website. Um, it's queenswab.myc. Queenswab I'm going to put this in the chat for folks. Um, this is a great place to to start getting information if you're ever. Um, looking for something, this is the landing page when you get here. Um, you can see there's a whole link on composting in Queens. Our calendar's here. There are things to take action, connect with us in the news about us. And this is, you know, this is a, a product of the communications committee, uh, communication, education, communication committee. So if you're interested in web um, design or keeping the website updated, that's another role that um, is open for folks to get involved with. Um, and we have a lot of flexibility here. So particularly with that Take Action tab, it's, it's a newer thing that we have on our website. So uh, the other committees, you know, that's a great place where like a pumpkin pledge could live on our website, things like that, like as the other committees are working, um, or if you have things that that you think should be there, like there's there's lots of flexibility with the website. And we really are erring on the side of putting um, more information on here. Um, so building that out is is something that that folks you too, but also this is where all the up-to-date information lives. Um, so in particular, um, I mentioned um, this calendar uh, thing. Great. Yeah. So again, this is where you know, all of this information lives in terms of when the meetings are, where the Zoom link is. 
this is the up-to-date info. So again, we we try and send out a uh, like digest of, of when the monthly committee meetings are and what time and the Zoom link. But if you're ever wondering, this website here, and in particular, this calendar, is where all of that information lives. Um, and we also put other things that are not QSWAB related. So if you have solid waste events that you hear about, um, panels, events, cleanups, anything like that, we can add to this calendar. Um, you know, folks who, who represent organizations, if your organizations have things that you want to put on here, um, we can definitely do that. And individuals as well. We know that people are involved in, in a lot of organizations in addition to QSWAB. So, you know, as things come up that you see that you want added to the calendar, just, just let us know and we can, we can add that. Um, but this is really the best place to to go to find out when when things are meeting. And as like times change and and whatnot, um, they'll be reflected in the calendar probably sooner than we could get an email out to folks. Um, so this is this is a good place for for the most up to date information. Um, additionally, uh, as I mentioned, we have um, several social media profiles. Um, so if you're active um, on any of these platforms, you know, following uh, our profiles would be super helpful. Interacting with with the QSWAB profile definitely helps boost our, our reach. Um, so following to get information and, and also to be interacting with us is, is super helpful. Um, I wanted to highlight in particular the link to the YouTube um, page only because this is where all of the recordings of our meetings and events live. Um, so you can see the, the newest um, video is, is the event from, from this past weekend, um, but we also have all of our meetings here as well. Um, so if you miss a meeting, if you want to get information that uh, you forgot the details of, uh, this is where the recordings live um as well as as the events um so this is this is also a, a good page to to have bookmarked or to check back on um as things so this is um just a quick overview of of voting um, and why good standing matters basically the the critical piece of of good standing is is that voting is um, only for members who are in good standing. And the way that we calculate a quorum is um, half of the, the half of the members who are in, in good standing count um, as a quorum and then only members who are in good standing are able to vote. Um, and so that's that's kind of the big the big behind attending meetings, being involved in a committee, it's to make sure that everyone's able to, to vote on these, these issues. Um, we're not particularly interested in, in removing folks, but we, we do really want people to, to be participating and showing up to things. Um, that's really the only way we can get things done. Um, you know, when, when folks don't attend meetings, it can make it difficult to reach a quorum, and so then we can't necessarily vote on something. Um, and some of the committees have have been struggling to get folks to to get things done, and and people, particularly the committee chairs, are taking on a lot um, of that burden to make sure that things that need to get done get done. Um, but we we'd love to to spread out the the load a little bit more um, and get some people actively involved. Um, one thing with voting that I did want to specifically highlight is electronic voting. Um, this is a newer procedure um, that we passed last year as an amendment to the bylaws. Just for, for new folks and a refresher for everyone, just what this looks like. So normally our, our work takes place during these monthly meetings. So the committees come to the monthly meetings with a report back of what they've worked on. If there are things to vote on, um, we'll usually send them ahead of time, usually have an agenda for the meeting. I wasn't able to get one tonight, but also knew that we would just be doing this kind of overview. Um, but normally all of that stuff is sent out ahead of time for you to look at, review, come to the meeting, ready to ask questions and vote on. 
Um, but occasionally, whether it's because we don't have a quorum or, um, you know, a lot of this is responding to the legislative cycle. So if there's all of a sudden a hearing that was scheduled before our next meeting that we didn't know about at the meeting prior or didn't have something ready to be approved, there's occasionally instances where we need to vote on things between meetings. And so we created this electronic voting um, provision to, to allow for that. And so basically what that looks like is there are three situations where we can use this um, electronic voting mechanism, one of which is when there's a motion at a meeting, but the meeting doesn't have quorum. Um, basically, we can push that motion to be voted on electronically after the meeting. Um, similarly, if we do have quorum, um, but we, for whatever reason, want folks to have a little bit more time to dig into the issue. Um, often this can be like joining a, a coalition. We might have someone come and present about the coalition at the meeting. We get links to the website, some material, whatnot, but we postpone actually voting on whether we want to join to allow people time to, to review more about, about whatever the, the issue is. Um, that's another thing we can do where where we uh, someone makes a motion, it's seconded, and then there's a subsequent motion to vote electronically on it um, outside of the meeting. That's fine. And then the third is when there's this urgent matter that arises between meetings. And the procedure for that is basically the everything has to take place in a committee. Um, excuse me, in order for, for it to be voted on electronically if it hasn't been brought up at a meeting. And so we, we, you know, I showed the calendar, that's where all of the committee meetings live. But if there's an urgent matter that the chair of a committee is expecting will result in something that needs to be voted on, we'll send out a special notice to, to folks about the upcoming committee meeting, let them know that there's likely something that's going to be voted on, um, and then it has to be voted on within the committee. Um, it's passed off to me, and then I send out um, usually a Google form ballot, and there's at least 24 hours for, for folks to respond. Um, depending on how urgent it is, we're flexible with, with how long we give people. We, we don't like to spring, you know, ballots on people and, and only allow 24 hours, so usually it'll be like the end of the week if you can get back to us, but that also depends. On what's being um, so uh, and this is also another reason why it's really important that we have up-to-date email addresses um, and in particular ones that that you're checking regularly and are, are unique to you so that um, the votes are, are uh, useful members um, any questions about electronic voting before I move on we only have uh, a few more things to cover. Any questions about electronic voting? Okay. Um, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, you do have any questions about that, um, especially as the first instance comes up. Um, I can do a refresher on what the person um, next, so uh, outside of kind of these official um, things, so uh, if you're on a committee, the committee chair will likely be emailing you about committee meetings. Um, you'll get emails from, from the QSWAB email about these monthly meetings, but kind of the in-between stuff, um, whether that's events or ongoing policy discussions, we have this Google group, um, and this is kind of the default communication um, is optional to be a part of. We don't automatically enroll people. So anything that does um, involve official QSWAP business will go directly to, to the members. But there are a lot of really great um, resources that come through this Google group. Um, and so I wanted to, and this is also open to, to the public. So if, if visitors, members of the public, um, particularly folks who are just finding out about QSWAB and want to know more, this is a great resource. Basically, um, 
anyone who's on QSwab, I'll, I'll send out an email after this meeting and it'll make it easy to join. But for, for members of the public and just in general, um, if you search for, for the Clean Solid Waste Advisory Board on Google Groups, you can do this ask to join um, and that will basically ping me so that there's interest in joining. Um, what I wanted to, to highlight for folks who are, are maybe a little hesitant about doing Doing this joining, there are different options when you do join. You can get an email um, for every new message that comes through the Google group, but you can also do these digest options where it will combine all emails from a day into one email so you're not getting multiple emails. And you can also set it so that you don't actually get emails and you just go to the Google group to view all of the messages. There are lots of ways that you interact with this. Um, as you know, there are tons of, of resources and events and conversations that happen here um, that we wouldn't want uh, you to miss out on. Um, so yeah, so I think the website, uh, this Google group, and then our social media pages are, are great ways to, to get in, in, in touch with us, share information, um, whatnot. We already covered this event, which was my last slide, but I did want to note here um, again that, you know, we end the meeting by talking about, you know, upcoming events. And so, again, this is an opportunity if you send me ahead of time any events that your organization has or interesting solid waste events that um, you think folks would be interested in, you can send them my way um, and we can, we can share that uh, with folks as well. Um, there's info on the right there, making sure I'm not missing anything. Um, right, right. Yeah, so so we're we're about at time tonight, but we have a few minutes, so i'll I'll open if if anyone has any questions um about QSwab generally or um if you have a, other events that you want to promote, we can we can take a few minutes now for that. Yes, Catherine. Hi, so um, we have an event on Sunday and it's at McNeil Park in College Point. And there is definitely an organics component to it. Um, we've got about 400 free lawn and leaf bags from DSMY that we'll be giving away as well as 1200 daffodil bulbs that we got through New Yorkers for parks um, this past week. And we picked them up at forest park. So I'm just, I've been begging them all night. It's like <laughs> six to eight per person. And we'll be giving them out um, from 12 to three. And um, yeah, we'll also, of course, we're always doing um, organics education with folks. We'll also have a cleanup and, um, Pumpkin decorating, which Allison, I definitely will take that opportunity to promote pumpkin pledge. <laughs> nah, I love it. Um, Jack o' lanterns are scarier when they're in the landfill. I love that line. I was reading through your material, so yeah, I'll definitely will promote that. And so, anyone who would like to come to the event this Sunday, we'd love to have you. So, um, thanks for the opportunity to promote it, Ryan. Um, Walter. If you want to talk about the event you have on Sunday. One second. Yeah, I just want to say the same thing. This Sunday, from 10 to 2, we have the e-waste at Forest Park, uh, the parking lot of the Dome, from 10 to 2. Last last Sunday, we had the uh, shredding event. This this Sunday, we're doing the e-waste and also any clothes, books, household items this Sunday. Uh, sponsored by Joe Adabo. Okay. Thank you so much. You got it. Wonderful. Um, any other announcements or questions? I guess I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I, I, basically, I put it in the chat. Um, I missed it. Uh, we're... In Far Rockaway, we're dealing with just mass blatant uh, ignorance or, or violation of of sanitation rules. Um, 
is there any way that we can get um, the the part? Actually, uh, how can we get sanitation to do their job so that um, we don't have it? Basically, it amounts to more than a ton of garbage that's disposed of outside of the hours that are that have been specified and that's just that's just within uh half of zip code 11691 so i haven't covered the whole area but i mean compared to the 30 or 40 pounds of garbage collected in cleanups it's a massive amount how do we get i would love to to organize the committee to to deal with um uh non-cooperation from both apartment buildings and the department of sanitation yeah yeah no thank you for for raising that that's you know one of our our biggest um complaints from the public public has has been just that is that you know their apartment buildings not willing to to participate in in various dsmy programs even though they want to um how to get dsmy to do things i mean i think that we've talked briefly about um you know having uh listening tours where we collect information to then present to dsmy as the solid waste advisory board um we can also collect and channel information. I mean, I think that, you know, individuals reporting to to through and one when they when they notice things is is one thing. Not um, working. Yeah, I've exactly. Got... Right. Yeah. So so from there, then I think one thing that we can do as a swab is then be uh, an additional point for for folks to to basically aggregate that to it's not an individual complaint this is something the swab is is commenting on so i think you know that's definitely within in the, the our purview is gathering complaints like that particularly larger ongoing things um we have communication with with dsmy um, but we can also, you know, we, and, and this is, you know, similar to what we do around legislation is, you know, writing official letters that that swab is passing off to whether it's DSMY or the city council or the mayor. Um, you know, I think that that is definitely something that we can do as a swab is um, whether it's it's providing a forum for for people in an area to to talk about a particular issue. Um, and then compiling something to with our letterhead to send off. Or um, if we don't think that we need that, we can just jump right to that point and, and draft something to then send to um, send to either DSMY or or some other other group. Um, so I can I can follow up with you um, to see how how that makes the most sense for us to operationalize that. Um, whether that's through a committee or or just drafting something, but we can I'll I'll follow up with you about how how it makes the most sense for us to get involved with that. Um, that's great because I mean the volume is is so it's hundreds of times the volume of of garbage that we're discussing in terms of composting, in terms of cleanups. I have to I have to laugh at at, at cleanups. Cleanups are ba basically political events where where you know somebody gets this picture taken and it gets a, a published in in the local newspaper that that they've cleaned up an area but but the 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 volume is is minuscule compared to the tons of garbage that are disp disposed of illegally and I think that's what I mean that that's the concern of CB14, of which I'm a member, and um, the uh, Edgemere Community Civic Association, of which I'm treasurer. So th those are our specific issues. We don't need any more legislation. <laughs> We've got tons of legislation. It's just not being enforced. So what we need is some, some means of getting things done, as opposed to creating 
more laws that won't be enforced. Yeah, yeah, no, and and you know that this is a big reason of of why the swabs were created in the first place is is exactly this advisory role of you know on the ground folks who are are interested in in seeing these programs followed through, um, reporting on where where it's missing the mark. Um, so I think that that's a role that we can we can grow more into. I, I think we've we've done some of that in the past and and you know, doing the the State of Waste and Queens report, I think involved a lot of that work. Um, since then, we, we haven't done as much, but I, I think that that's something that, that we should definitely take up as um, our role of the swab is is highlighting these areas where where things are not, um, where policies or, or laws or programs are not being carried out um, and, and working with the city to get that addressed. Um, so I think that that's definitely something that we can we can do more of. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, with that, we are we are at we're a few minutes past eight. Um, so I'll I'll if someone has a a last minute point or question or or event, we can take that. Um, otherwise, um, we can take a motion to to adjourn. It's Susan. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Wonderful. I'll second that. Well, thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Bye. Thank you. Well, thank bye. you, everyone. Now follow up. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. bye.